And now, from the dark corners of the internet, where exploits run wild, and packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, a beer flows steady, it's Paul Security Weekly! segment is sponsored by Palo Alto Networks, creators of the next generation firewalls, helping you enforce network security policies based on applications, users, and content. Visit them on the web at paloaltonetworks.com. And by Tenable Network Security, the creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Check out Tenable's other cool products such as the Passive Vulnerability Scanner and Security Center Continuous View. Visit them on the web at www.tenable.com. It's now time to fire up a packet capture, pour yourself a beer, and give the intern control of your botnet harvesting bitcoins. Because here's your host, he's a man who has a very small number of cells in his Vienna sausage, Paul Asadorian. Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Paul Security Weekly. I'm very pleased to be here tonight. I'll introduce the members of Security Weekly and then we've got a very special episode. The folks from Pony Express are here and uh, we'll introduce them in just a moment. Uh, Larry Pesci is here in the studio. Welcome, oh, Larry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been having fun today. That's good. You've got yeah. a- antennas connected to your laptop. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I was playing with the last week uh, uh, phrasing, and uh, I got it working last week, but the signal's a little bit better down here. I'm actually uh, capturing um, uh, Poxag pager traffic, and I've got some nice. some going on here. Code green, adult here now. Code green, adult here now. Admitting ER beds. Yeah, small bowel obstruction. Wait a minute, that's not. Are you good. getting hospital pager oh yeah. signals? Oh yeah, all sorts of stuff. That's, that's Phone pretty numbers. Um, that's pretty yep. awesome. Sleeper fever of 102. Uh, <laughs> has ear infection. Is giving medications, but very lethargic and won't eat. Play. Sounds like a child. That's and, uh, <coughs> and, phone, and phone numbers. Those numbers. of us with children recognize those symptoms right away. Yep. Mr. Jack Daniel. Where? Here. What? Oh, what? Hey! Hey! He's old and confused tonight. <laughs> I guess that's no different from... In the immortal words of old what's-his-name, who am I and why am I here? What's <laughs> Admiral Stockdale, it came to me. See? He's that's older than I am. Phrasing. Well, he's deader than I am. On the lines via Skype, <laughs> Mr. John Strand is here. John, welcome to the show. Hello, hello, hello. And Joff Thayer is here as well. Welcome, Joff. G'day, Paul and crew. How are you this evening? Wonderful, thank you. I'm now going to turn it over to Paul Padgett. Welcome, Paul. And Thank Paul, you, Paul is in the studio. All the Pony Express folks are in the studio. So if you're listening to the audio only, you got to go check the video out because we've got all of their gear here, which I'm hoping they conveniently leave behind and forget <laughs> so that we can use it. Uh, but all of their <coughs> gear is here live on uh, high-definition internet TV. And Paul Padgett is here to introduce her. And welcome, Paul, to the studio. Thank you, Paul. It's good to be here. Uh, we had a chance to chat a couple of months back. And uh, yeah. I told you we'd come back and bring all the gear and... Uh, Leave have some behind. fun tonight, so that's that's <laughs> what it's about. Nice, very so, nice. And who'd yeah. you bring? Who'd you bring with you? So we have a uh, couple of our lead technical guys that work with our customers, uh, handle all the training, all the tips and tricks with the products. Don Kellaway is uh, to my left over here, and uh, to my right, just below here, is uh, he's known as Not Kevin. Is that correct? So no, it's not, not Kevin. Not Kevin. Right. I didn't know I was so. in the midst of a celebrity. Right. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, the, and the sad part is we were actually talking about that show we on were. the show last yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. Off the so. hook. So. Yeah. He's so like, we're I'm really like, excited I'm to like, be here. Wait. There used oh. to be a not Kevin on off the hook. He's like, yeah, dude, that was me. I'm like, get yeah, out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had something for you to sign. I'll you do. You do. I do. <laughs> after the show. <laughs> All right. Fine. Right. Paul, yeah. Paul, undo the button. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> wait, what? In a family way? Yeah. How did it get that way? So uh, I had the chance of trying to convince this guy. I know he likes cigars, so we yeah. shared a cigar together before the show, and I have one now. But also trying to convince you to get a at a Harley. So I got mine outside. Had yeah, a nice you brought ride your down bike down from Boston today. Beautiful day here in Rhode Island, and uh, so we're psyched to be here. We'd love to uh, show you some things tonight and get some questions and get this thing going. Awesome. So awesome. if you so I gotta ask if you have a Harley. Okay, so up I'm gonna turn it anytime right. soon. I'm sorry. Hang on, Paul. There's uh, John. Go ahead, John. Uh, since you have a Harley, I just had to ask, you coming up to Sturgis anytime soon? 
Are you coming up to Sturgis anytime soon, John asks. Uh, no, but I want to. That's that's a trip we definitely... Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do this together. You want to go to Sturgis? I live, uh, you get I your live bike 10 minutes from there. John lives you right 10 minutes Oh, he does? Sturgis. So we yeah. got a place yeah. to stay. There you go. <laughs> John, we're crashing at your place. <laughs> Done. I, I can sleep 15 at my house. He says he can sleep Consensually. 15, so we'll bring friends. 20. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks, John. <laughs> I don't want a waiver. <laughs> I don't have a headset, John, so uh, I like what I'm hearing, though. Those speakers, yeah, should be, we could, we could turn those speakers up so that, uh, the uh, live audience members can hear everyone. John, talk again. This is a test. This is Yay. a test of my microphone to make sure that yeah, it's working. Everyone can hear you now. All there right, might be a awesome. little loud. We might be getting a little feedback. We need to turn that down a little bit. But Paul, Just thank you hair. very much. Thank you. Uh, if we have questions, we'll uh, we'll bring you back. Absolutely. We don't want to interrupt your cigar smoking and beer I'm, drinking. I'm going to sit down That's and enjoy my cigar. Very important. Yes. But we're going to turn it over to Don right now. He's going to give you a little tiptoe through the the devices that we have. Some cool stuff. A new phone phone that we just introduced. Yep. And uh, and then we'll get into some tips and tricks and some things that we think everybody will enjoy seeing. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thanks, cool. Paul. Thank you. Don, over to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that uh, intro. So um, as you all know, Pony Express started out a few years ago, uh, initially with the Pone Plug Elite, uh, this small little device fully capable of performing vulnerability assessments, penetration testing, uh, both wired and wireless environments. And, uh, and in a couple, our, our and hand, a our hand model. Oh, our hand model? Our hand our model hand today is not Kevin. Oh, he had a uh, manicure and everything. It's true. Well, well, yeah. Dan it's very, it's very nice. A home plug nice. elite, and and you had a couple of different models of that. You know, some wireless, some three G. Well, they all, yeah, they all have, uh, they all yeah, support different like functionality sure. of what you're referring to. Um, yeah. This is the the last incarnation of the Palm Plug Elite. Uh, 512 megs of memory, okay. uh, 32 gig drive. It supports wireless, wired, uh, Bluetooth uh, with adapters. It also supports NAC bypass. So if you're looking to uh, try to uh, you know, covertly uh, mm -hmm. escape a network, it'll support that functionality as well. Um, once the Pwn Plug Elite settled, uh, our next product that we came out with was the, uh, the Power Pwn, which was a DARPA-funded uh, project. Uh, I'm sorry, the Power uh, Pwn Power here on the uh, corner of the desk. Looks like a power supply. Which you guys are all using for your stuff. It's an actual <laughs> functioning <laughs> power supply. It is yeah. a fully functional power supply. Uh, that's modeled after the Pwn Plug Elite. Different form factor. Mm -hmm. uh, fully capable, again, of performing assessments, penetration testing, uh, using a uh, Kylie Linux uh, distribution. Uh, after that, we came out with our uh, Pwn Plug R2, which looks like an access point here at the end of the table. Mm -hmm. uh, as you see, another, another form factor of our product line. Uh, the, with the Pwn Plug R2, Looks like an access point, again, fully capable of supporting NAC bypass, performing wired wireless assessments, Bluetooth assessments, allowing you to see all the things in a remote network that is deployed within. Um, after that came our Pwn Appliance, which is a much larger um, uh, solution geared for enterprise type of deployments, distributed deployments, uh, supporting uh, eight gigs of uh, memory, uh, VM support. Uh, you can also install Tenable Nessus on this device. Gives you an opportunity nice, to form. Nice plug, Don. Nice yeah, plug. you like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, something that Kevin and I were quite happy to see, uh, allowing us to perform an opportunity to perform assessments of a remote environment securely, <coughs> as if you were physically sitting in that environment, uh, 60 gig solid state drive. And then uh, our next solution was the Pwn, uh, the, the Pwn pad itself, which Kevin has in front of him. And the Pwn pad debuted in January 2013. This is the second release of the Pwn pad. This is the 2014 edition. Uh, coming out in January 2014, two gigs of memory, very mobile solution. Uh, you know, you walk around, you can perform wired assessments. Obviously, if you have the adapter to plug into a wall or wireless assessments, which is really what it's perfectly perfectly adapted yeah, yeah, for. And it's um, it's running Kismet now, right? Yeah, this is currently running Kismet. Yeah. So yeah. for all you home viewers, you can see every access point in this area right now, and it's also logging using the internal GPS, so you can outport this to Google Maps, which mm -hmm. makes it very convenient yeah, to excellent. start doing AP mapping. Excellent. And then our, our latest product that we just released uh, is the Pwn Phone, which is uh, even more powerful than the Pwn Pad at half the size. Hmm. Um, and only a two-year contract. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kevin can speak more about the, uh, the Pwn Phone and, and what it can offer in a minute or two. But the Pwn Phone itself, uh, obviously much smaller, fully capable of doing everything that we've talked about thus far, Bluetooth assessments. He actually has the Bluetooth adapter on the back of the phone right now. So any devices that are you know, basically broadcasting their presence, uh, he can likely, you know, pick up that traffic with the phone as well. Nice. You know, um, I, I just realized that this is like a really geeky, awesome version of a Tupperware party. 
right. Yes, it I is. was thinking about a different kind of party. <laughs> I have uh, I had my embedded device toy. lab in the back. We were yeah, a, a, we were, ge- a geeky yeah. sex toy party. But. So one of the uh, the common themes amongst all of our product line is that uh, you have an ability to uh, to configure them and easily deploy them for uh, for uh, remote assessments of, of an environment. And the idea is that with any one of our products, although this might be more geared towards the fixed solution, the fixed solutions consisting of the elite, the the appliance, the R2, the pawn power opposed to the mobile solutions, which, be, which would be the pad and the phone. Uh, with all of our product solutions, we have an opportunity to launch a web browser and then configure them easily for deployment. The idea being is that uh, if you need to perform an assessment of a remote environment that you physically cannot be at, the idea is that you can configure the device in advance and uh, just basically ship it to that location. Here from this screen, you have an opportunity to specify uh, an IP address yeah, for I the device. Uh, Chris is going to switch your screen so the viewers will be able to see that. You just want to make it bigger. Can we oh, make it bigger? How's there, that? there we go. That's can we, can looking we go good. One, can we go one more? Is that too much? How's that? Okay. Is that good? Super. So you can configure the device in advance with an IP address if known, if it's more of a, a white box or gray box test. <coughs> of course, you can just uh, leverage DHCP, and the idea is that <coughs> you could then uh, configure the solution for uh, DHCP and it'll assign an IP address, and then once the IP address is known to the device, it automatically will, you can automatically begin converting, uh, communicating back to the uh, receiving system you know, using a reverse shell functionality, uh, which also can be configured here on the screen. Uh, let's see here, let's go backwards. Underneath reverse shells, we have a functionality here that you can enable supporting, supporting uh, standard reverse SSH, SSH egress buster. So the idea is based upon the environment that you're deploying the device within, having some sort of knowledge in advance. You, know, you might want to enable certain ports if you know the ports might be allowed outbound. If not, you can use the egress buster in the device and it doesn't matter which device we're referring to, uh, the device itself will try to figure out a way to actually communicate back to the receiving system, the control system. So center, it, it tries all those ports that you're clicking on there? That's correct. Yep. You gotcha. can enable all these ports. Now, for the environments where there may not be any sort of internet connectivity at all, um, and there are several different ways that you can go about the process of establishing connectivity, there is an option at the bottom of the screen, the, uh, the 4G GSM functionality. So the idea is that if you insert a data card into the device, and again, all these devices support that functionality, uh, you insert a, a data card with a data plan, whether it's ATT or Verizon or whomever it might be. So you need uh, to buy one of these cards from the provider? That's correct. Okay. Yep. And have a data plan associated with it. And I gotcha. uh, once that card is inserted into the device, this provides more of a, an out of band type of access to the device. So that uh, should you try to control the device or need to control the device and uh, connectivity over the internet is simply not possible, not feasible, uh, you have an opportunity to still control the device using your, your phone or using some other mechanism. Yeah. I gotcha. Now, do you put any kind of Linux system somewhere on the internet for it to go back to, or? Great question. Uh, yes, uh, the idea is that you would have a Kali system, a Kali Linux okay. distribution, uh, which would act as your designated receiver. Mm-hmm. And when you go through the process of configuring reverse shells, uh, one of the options that you see here on the screen is the ability to create this script. You download the script. Preferably, you yeah, run remember, this from the Kali. Remember that now, yeah. There yep, you go. Yep. You run the script on your designated receiver system, mm-hmm. and uh, that system will then begin a, a process of listening for all the appropriate port numbers that you've configured. And the idea being is that um, the device, when placed in that remote <coughs> environment, once it, confi- uh, once it establishes a communication through any one of the different methods that you have <coughs> enabled, uh, that receiving system, once it receives the incoming connection, you then establish a reverse SSH session into the device by utilizing a, uh, uh, a, a specialized port and uh, that will allow a reverse connection into the device so that you can access the device, the result of the device initiating the connection to you. Mm-hmm. So for those types of environments where there's absolutely zero inbound connectivity, you have no control of the firewall, uh, for, for, for outbound connectivity, it's just a perfect solution. You basically configure it in advance, drop ship it. Anybody, as long as they know how to plug a cable into the wall and a mm-hmm. cable into the wall mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. for Ethernet, the device is up and running instantly. Yep. Yeah. So now, uh, uh, what's the SSH over HTTP tunnel? Explain the. Yeah. Kind of go through them. Explain each one in a little more detail. Sure. Us. So the idea behind this is that a standard reverse SSH is just a regular port 22 session. Uh, you know, nothing unique about that. Egress Buster we just talked about that allows you an opportunity to configure any one of these combination of ports and serially right. we'll just. And that's all just these ports. SSH over those that's ports. Correct. correct. Just okay. a pure SSH session. Uh, further on down, you have the SSH over HTTP, DNS, SSL, and ISMP. And this is where we're actually will tunnel SSH through these through protocols. Those protocols. So we're actually. So if it only lets HTTP out, correct. You can right. do SSH over that. Yeah. And it does support proxy uh, if, in fact, you know that a proxy server might be in use inside that uh, <coughs> environment. 
It's, uh, it can be configured for proxyware as well as uh, authentication. Um, ICMP, DNS, other different ways of actually uh, allowing traffic outbound. We will actually encapsulate the SSH inside uh, the, uh, the specified protocol. Now, have you guys done thought about doing uh, automatic proxy discovery just like uh, sort of Internet Explorer does if needed? So it's a great question. It has come up in the past for future requests. I'm not sure where it is on the horizon of implementation, but it is something that we have received an inquiry about uh, on one or two occasions I'm aware of. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. That's a lot of different ways out of the network. That's yeah, awesome. I mean, for black, uh, for black box type of testing, it's, uh, you can turn on all these different methods. One of the nice, fe one of the nice features I've used uh, is the fact that uh, there was a snowstorm up in Boston that we got hit really hard with, yeah. and I couldn't get into the office, and I needed to actually perform uh, I need to actually get into one of the devices I had deployed. Mm -hmm. and, and I couldn't do it because I wasn't at corporate headquarters where the receiver system that I had previously configured um, to receive the incoming connection to allow that. What I actually had the forethought of doing was configuring the different methods to use different receiving systems. Mm -hmm. So I actually was able to access uh, the appliance not only from corporate, but I was also able to access it from my home. So uh, you can give it multiple... Systems to talk out to Correct. So it actually was it was a fantastic opportunity because uh, you know I couldn't get to the office that day and yep. I was stuck at home. Not that that's a bad thing, but uh, it gave me an opportunity to still be able to basically perform the engagement I was mm -hmm. signed up to do. You know, uh, from my home, albeit uh, and, post from the office. And some of the other options too. You enable all of them. They all connect back to you on different ports. That's correct. And uh, so should one of them work great? Should all of a sudden the the quote victim discover something as part of a pen test that they weren't told about type of thing. That's correct. They shut off access to one IP via HTTP and yeah, all of your other stuff still has the potential. Well, to work. what's interesting is if you're uh, DHCP and you get the DNS server from it and using a DNS tunnel, your packets are going to the local DNS server and then being tunneled out, right? Uh, or does it need a direct DNS yeah, connection? Yeah, it's going to be out? a direct DNS connection. You're specifying the IP okay. address and the traffic so still looks needs, like DNS. Yeah, yeah, so it looks like DNS. Exactly. Okay. It looks like someone's just performing DNS queries outbound from the network, except right, for all the you. empty space inside the, the DNS packets will support the commands that we're embedding within. And they're probably not going to block, well, depending on how their network's mm. configured, right? Well, that's the beauty of it, because uh, if there's an IPS solution inside the environment, that's what we're talking about, that all of a sudden steps on something, yep. there's still yeah, always there's some, other some other opportunity. Yeah. And then uh, even if... The, if everything is affected, you've still got the 4G GSM, mm -hmm. you know, right, which yeah, is right. always like, that's like your ultimate backdoor yep. access into yeah, the, the device. I, I love the, uh, the SSH over SSL, because <laughs> how many people do uh, SSL inspection outbound? Right, right. Yeah, yeah and it's very, few, very few, yeah, 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 very few. Yeah, exactly. So uh, besides this nice, easy to use type of configuration for the, for the, you know, the drop shipping of our devices, Obviously, uh, you know, from shell access, whether it's uh, the reverse shell or, or a straight SSH shell into the device, you know, it's nothing more than just basically logging in, you know, typing in a passphrase, assuming I can type, you know, receiving a banner, and then once you have access to that device... Make it bigger, Don. Make all that Phrasing! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> How's that? Is that... Uh, 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 yeah, uh, you command control plus. plus. Yeah, 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 command plus. Command plus. Ah, uh, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep, ooh, yeah. There there we go. Go. Good? There you go. All right. All right. So there you have a banner uh, for one of our appliance solutions, and the idea now is, at this point in time, you could utilize um, you could utilize this remote access to perform any one of the hundred plus <coughs> Kali tools that you'd be familiar with. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. with the Kali Linux distribution. And we've taken the entire Kali Linux distribution and we've streamlined it, focusing on the more commonly used tools mm -hmm. for performing information gathering, you know, uh, assessments. So again, both wired, wireless, Bluetooth. And uh, using so wait, this, this is one of these devices running live right now. Yes, correct. Oh, yeah, yeah. So can we break into Jack's laptop like uh, right we now? Probably could. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's running Windows. <laughs> he's the, he's the be that only hard. one here that's running Windows. <laughs> I hear an NS8067 uh, <laughs> <laughs> popping up. So, uh, so the idea Jack, now. Jack, click that and say okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't mind that banner. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the idea now is that I'd be able to perform any sort of type of assessment remotely. You know, and uh, the beauty of all this uh, is that uh, I don't actually have to be there in that environment. I can right. actually do this from the corporate office, from my home, um, from anywhere, really. So excellent. All of this uh, basically leads to uh, a, a topic or a conversation about our fixed products. Uh, now let's talk about mobile products. Mm. You know, and the mobile products. Uh, well, wait, Doug, can we go through some of the hardware, the fixed products, uh, sure. in a little more detail? Sure. Uh, specifically, since uh, the elite home plug elite, right? This one is kind of like end of lifing. 
It is, yeah. We are going to be uh, stopping the production that. of that device. That's correct. Uh, and this is the one that you, it comes with the sticker that is an, the, air, an the air, air freshener. freshener yeah. Yep. Yes. Because it yeah. kind of looks like an air freshener. A little, uh, you know, printer, e PSU connect, sticker. Yeah. Ethernet connected air freshener. I've yeah, actually deployed go. this in customer networks before. It's great fun. Th there's a story behind that, though. There was actually a, um, a large bank out west that was involved. I think I was actually doing an assessment. Uh, he was hired to do an assessment, a consultant hired to do an assessment for a banking institution. They had 10 locations, and, uh, and he basically was using the, the, the pull and plug elite as his method of you know, basically walking in and introducing himself, saying that he was there to perform air quality testing, you know, some sort of BS story. And uh, he basically popped that into the wall, plugged it in. No one, looked, no one gave him a second look, yep. walked out, and uh, obviously he had free range, uh, free access to the entire environment. After the third bank, uh, as he notified the, uh, you know, his contact as to the results with each engagement, with each location, they basically said, yeah, let's just stop and not even continue any further. Obviously, we have an issue. So, right. <laughs> so uh, that was... <coughs> he made the them aware that air fresheners require <coughs> Ethernet access. Yeah, exactly. Well, well it's <laughs> got to report back to the... The, the central the air reality. freshener the, controller yeah. system. Yeah. Yep. There's a fun follow-up to that story. The, uh, the, an employee of the bank eventually contacted her manager saying that the mm. quality of air had deteriorated <laughs> after they took the device <laughs> out of the building. Wow. Yep. Oh, man. Uh, that's pretty funny. Pretty funny. Yep. Um, so th but this is the – we're end of lifing this one, yep. right? Um, support, support still be available for that for a while? Yes, yes, for okay. a period of time, yeah. Because I own two I of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> Might be time to upgrade to an R2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Kevin, we need to turn your microphone down a little bit. You're very, you have this very loud, booming voice. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Hey, you that's could. not Kevin. That's okay. not Kevin. Um, talk again. <coughs> Hello. Talk again. Hi. Yeah, that's better. Uh. Thanks, Chris. Um, so this is the R2. So this replaces the poem plug. Correct. Elite. So if we could get, I don't know, uh, it's kind of on the edge of the table here. It's kind of hard to see the other ports on it. Yeah, the, the plug Did the lights go on when I moved it? Is it? Oh, no, that, that's a network traffic. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I caused network traffic when I lifted <laughs> it up. That was strange. I jiggled the No, 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 it's just because you have your hands off your keyboard. <laughs> yes, <down> exactly. So. <laughs> uh, so this is the R2. So what, um, what is the process? Is it ARM? It's an ARM processor? Yes. Okay, yes. is it a dual core? Uh, no, I believe that's a single core. Single core, single core. ARM processor. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, one gig of memory, uh, 32 gig uh, SD card. Uh, also running uh, the Kali Linux distribution. Uh, again, what we call the Ponix distribution. Okay. A streamlined And version. it's USB 3.0? It uh, is. Th yep. Ooh. And uh, e Ethernet, obviously. Dual, yep. Supports NAC bypass. Okay. And wh what are the, I can't see the other side of it. What are the other? Uh, the USB, yep. USB 3.0 for supporting the optional adapters like the Bluetooth yep. adapter. Oh, and there's two Ethernets on two there. Ethernets. Yep, two Ethernets. One for okay. the, uh, say, the wall and the other one for a client system, a desktop. <coughs> and the um, Wi-Fi card is built in, I can see. Correct. That's pretty yeah, cool. Custom, a custom build. Yeah. So that that uh, uh, system board is a custom, correct? Custom build. Yeah. Because uh, that is that card actually on the system board, or is it's it a, a mini daughter card? Mini card. It's a daughter it's card. A daughter card. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. And, and the uh, there's another slot here for the 3G, sure. 4G. Yeah. And that's all built right in. And yeah. when is that mini SD as well? Yeah. So mini SD and uh, a SIM card slot, all built right in. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that would definitely be a custom build. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> awesome. That's I've never seen a device with that stuff come. It's a, it's, a yeah. nice, it's a nice form. It's a nice form factor, a nice small device. Um, and it's not made to look like an air freshener now. It's made to look That's like an access point. Exactly. Yeah. A different okay. type of scenario whereupon, you know, maybe there's more of a, you know, an acknowledged placement of this solution opposed right. to something that we might be more, more discreet. So or like you just want to hide it completely. Well, that's true. I mean, I've heard stories. I, I don't know if there's any truth to this, but I've heard stories where people have actually taped them underneath desks, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, with a battery, you know, because it doesn't have much of a power draw. I've heard multiple stories where the networking closet is accessible from the bathroom. <laughs> I wouldn't know. About On that. multiple <laughs> occasions, <laughs> multiple pen testers have told me that, and it's a different bathroom, oh, so well they say. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes yes. it's the ladies' room. Actually, there was well. a networking closet in the ladies' room <laughs> at Brown University. Actually, uh, one of the network nice. closets was in the ladies' room. Nice. Wow. And there was not one female that worked in network operations. Oh, that's <laughs> bad. <laughs> so that was. Uh, I don't know. They, I think they had to find a stand-in to go. Mm. Wow. Make well, because sure nobody was going in there, so what, you weren't right. going to get caught. Yeah. <laughs> I think the switches were actually in the bathroom. Nice. Yeah. nice. So that would be a good nice. place to hide it. Absolutely. Um, no one would ever question it. Dumb question on power. Support power over Ethernet. I don't think that No, does. it no, doesn't. Does. You, you oh, need that some. That one was uh, yeah, you'd, you'd need one five of amps input. You need a, it's yeah. a five amp, yeah. but you, you could do like a vampire tap. Okay. I mean, we've played around with this in our lab, but we've never really made a, a, 
a product we're comfortable selling because sure. it's such a hack job to do. Yeah, yeah. We've seen some customers do some really cool stuff with vampire taps, but uh, for us to actually commercialize that and be, make it a product that we'd feel comfortable mm -hmm. for customers it actually It draws a deploying. lot of power with all that stuff on it. Yeah. Though, especially the wireless card. Plus, if you USB 3.0, draws a ton of power. Yep. Now, what so what's the, the wall wart look like? Is that a one amp wall wart or is it higher? Ooh. The Pone Plug Elite? No, no, no. The, the Rev2. Because it's powered with a wall wart. Correct. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's seven. Whoa. All right. <laughs> okay. That's pretty beefy. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, beefy. That's pretty Don't cool. Don't plug that into your other stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so who's your, who's your audience for the R2? Is it primarily pen testers or really anyone, right? Anyone, really. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. It could be anyone. Um, you know, the products are so versatile, and uh, they can support a lot of different use cases. I mean, for some environments, it simply could be just uh, information gathering only. For other types of environments, it very well could include pen testing. You know, up to and including pen testing. And uh, the nice thing is that they're all fully supportive of that functionality. Obviously, right. you know, each solution has a bit of give and take with respect to its power and CPU. Some devices might be more uh, better suited, you know, for pen testing. Like the appliance, you know, with eight gigs of memory and a 60 gig solid state drive. I mean, you could knock off, uh, you could knock a LAN off. I mean, a large uh, network off in no time at all with something like that. Obviously, with an elite, it's going to take a little bit more time. You'll have right. to this segment heavy testing. too. Right. It's a solid, that's a solid box. And, yeah. and that's not so much as a, I'm going to covertly going to go drop this off. That Correct. is more of a, hey, we're contracted to, to do some sort of pen test. You Perfect. want to save some travel costs. Perfect. We can spend $110 and overnight you this Very box. Very popular with consultants. Yep. You know, consultants mm -hmm. who are basically hired to perform engagements on a regular mm -hmm. basis. You mm -hmm. know, they've got a customer they need to assess on a monthly basis. They don't want to fly on a plane. They don't want to have to hop in a car. Yep. That thing can be placed Physically, and that's also available in two different form factors. That's the desktop version. We also, we also have a 1U rack mount. Oh, nice. Gotcha. So a more permanent solution could be deployed. Uh -huh. And we actually can scale up the power and the memory on, on the rack mount, obviously, uh, to be uh, supportive of much larger type of environments. But the gotcha. idea is that permanent placement and uh, also easily configured uh, as what you've seen here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you can basically assess anything with that yeah. bad boy. And, and not ARM processor on that one. That's correct. No, that, that's no. an X86. 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 Okay. And how much RAM on this one again? Eight. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and uh, what, 30, 30 gig S or 60 gig? 60 gig. Yeah. 60, yeah. Yeah. And one of the nice things about that, as I said earlier, is that, uh, you know, we've been experimenting with uh, installing other types of product solutions on top of it. And one of which, one of the first things we did uh, just a few months ago was, uh, was drop Tenable Nessus on there. And as a result of the reverse shell functionality, we were able to access uh, Tenable Nessus through the reverse shell. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the idea is that we could perform assessments, full-blown Nessus assessments of the target environment uh, securely, you know, through the reverse shell functionality uh, through right. the device. So that's pretty cool. We're also starting to see a lot of customers who are picking these devices not particularly for penetration testing, but for rapid visibility into areas they can't see from mm -hmm. their head, from their headquarters. So instead of flying in a, a, a consultant or a team out, they're actually just drop shipping one of these devices just to see, let's say, the wireless environment. So they have no visibility on the wireless side. So they'll just put this in the mail. It'll call home and it'll just fire up Kismet. Right. Yep. It's not powered on when it's in the mail because that's illegal, right? Well, right, yeah. <laughs> we, we wouldn't condone that. Wait, yeah, wait, wait for my... Wait, 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 wait to see if my uh, Black Hat talk gets... Yeah, <laughs> some of those research. If, if, no. if not, it will be at DerbyCon. Um, so with the... Um, the R2, uh, oh, I want to say, so the visibility, that's pretty interesting because mm -hmm. there's a lot of products on the market that can sniff stuff, um, can do intrusion detection, um, can even do wireless uh, monitoring, right? But this product's kind of unique because it, not, it doesn't just get what's going through the wireless switch, right? It's any wireless mm -hmm. because it's yep. a wireless sniffer. Um, it also has the advantage of getting Bluetooth yep. uh, as well. And Zigbee, too. I saw that in your That's on the horizon. It's yeah. on the horizon. Okay. On the horizon. Okay. A and so my next question would be that for me as a as a pen tester would be very valuable with the abil the ability to support the RTL SDR because mm. one of the things that we found you know just sitting here last week was I was playing with this instead of capturing Poxag pager traffic which might be kind of interesting near one of those facilities uh, was we picked up Chris's wireless 900 megahertz head headset hmm. and now we can start potentially picking up other wireless microphones for presentations uh, wireless headsets and call centers um, mm. any of those type of analog type of transmissions 433 megahertz 900 megahertz stuff might be kind of interesting is that capturing there or is that actually transmitting that's that this device is the $20 device we talked about on episode 300 yeah it's just and capturing. that's capture only um, to put a 
uh, a uh, transmit device on there would be significantly larger. Mm. Yeah. But well within within reason. Were you able to get the pager traffic from next door? I mean, that's kind of an interesting... Um, not that pager traffic from okay. next door. This is strictly... Uh, the stuff that I'm looking at is strictly, you know, regular pager traffic. You remember back in the day and beep, 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 beep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that yeah, kind yeah of, all yeah. that Well, stuff. I think it would be interesting on a pen test and then what else, you know, if you drop that device off and if there's some other radio transmissions that you can interact with, you know, like Larry said, the headset or, yep. you know, next door it's the pager traffic, but in a corporation... That could be anything, right? Yep. Yep. Um, so next door you have the little button where you push it and the waitress shows up because it's on a little pager system. <laughs> or when you go out to eat, right, you get the yep. little pager traffic thing like that. Yep. Um, so on your pen test, if you use similar devices, to be able to mess with that stuff I mean, that's is really cool. And, and that's the right platform yep. to do that yep. stuff on. I mean, right? Me personally, I'd like it for listening to, to listen yeah. to all sorts of radio traffic, security guards, you know, call centers, that type of stuff. So just, just me because <laughs> I'm like that. Well, not just you. Well, others too, right? Now, the power strip, right? I mean, that's obviously you're pretending to be a help, de- <coughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> excuse me, help desk personnel. There's a story that goes behind that there one, is. right? And Kevin actually was uh, instrumental in the design and the development of the power strip, uh, the, you know, the pollen power. So I'll let Kevin speak and to that. And, and, and so, so to that, Kevin, that is a completely custom device. I, yeah, I've, I've, it's, a, it's a not Kevin build. I've built many of these <laughs> devices. It is completely custom. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a you pull something off the shelf no. and it's no, a... No, th- th- you know. these are a labor of love. Yeah. They, they really are. are. And they take a real toll on your hands. Yeah, the, the, the case is all custom designed, yep. obviously, to support the function. Everything, all the, ins- that's all the guts that are inside it. Sure, all custom. Yeah. So just to give you an idea of what, awesome. what's actually running on the inside, this is a stripped down version of the Pwn Plug Elite. So we've taken the board, we've mounted it internal side, we've taken all the adapters that ship with the pome plugs. You have the TP-Link bl- uh, for Wi-Fi, you have the Bluetooth. We've actually mounted them internal to uh-huh. the case. So you have the full functionality of the pome plug Elite along with all of its adapters, but you can simultaneously run them. And you have the functionality, you can't see it here, but you have two NICs for doing network access control bypass. Nice. nice. That's awesome. So you could put that in between a printer, right? It exactly. Is or or a NAC. PC. Or, or, or a, a phone, a VoIP phone. So the, the way the, the network access control bypass works is... Ah, this is a question I was going to ask. Uh, so <laughs> it, yeah, let's talk about that. So it, it listens <coughs> for the first outbound 80 packet. And as, as soon as it sees that, it'll actually grab that off and then roll its MAC address. So it, in virtue, it becomes authenticated on the network. So it'll piggyback off of the victim PC's traffic and it'll actually fire off that reverse shell. So you have it, it, it needs to sit in line. It needs, to sit, it needs to be in line with the victim PC and the switch or the wall. So the victim PC goes into one port, the wall goes, goes into the other exactly. port. Exactly. I see. And this is the, can be conveniently hidden under someone's desk and act as their power strip. It's game over. Yeah. That's awesome. The device itself, uh, whether it's the, uh, the Pwn Plug Elite or the Pwn Power, uh, it also it has a stealthy mode. So it's totally invisible from the environment. Uh, at that point in time, if you enable the NAC bypass, the only method of access in and out of that solution would, through, would be through one of the river shells. So, um, you know, the, the box won't respond to ARPs, it won't respond to pings, uh, there's, no, there's no listening ports on the solution, so it's totally a, a, hidden, a hidden device that in line will allow uh, communication. That's awesome. Okay, so those are all the, the fixed. The fixed devices, yes. as you call them. Okay. Uh, so now, let's talk a little bit about the... The sexiness. The sexiness, the, the, sexiness the, the, the phones <laughs> and the... <laughs> And uh, so, but you could use this as your regular phone. If you stuck yeah, a SIM card in there, yeah. this could just be a regular phone, right? Yeah. It's kind of like the duress option. Now, if you drop this in the toilet, is there a warranty that you get like a new one? Because <laughs> my wife dropped her iPhone in the toilet. And uh, then once we got it working again, she dropped it on the ground and chipped the corner of it. So I told her I was going to buy her a flip phone. I think you should buy her uh, a Pwn phone. Maybe she needs a Pwn phone. I think she needs a phone. with a warranty? Can you get a warranty on it? Like yes. a Best Buy yeah. warranty? Yes. Yes. It does. It protects against drops in toilets. You yeah. might need a separate line item for that one. It's a limited warranty. There is a limited warranty available. Uh, um, so, but it is it is uh, the Google Nexus phone, Nexus uh, Five, Nexus so Five. It's pretty. That's pretty nice. And this is running the uh, a different operating system. So it's it's running the same operating system, but in a different manner. So all of our devices run the same Ponex operating system, which is a derivative of Kali. Mm-hmm. But what's unique about the mobile line is that it is running inside of CH root environment within Android. Dang so that's how we're able to use all of the standard penetration testing tools that you would normally use on an engagement, but through the Android UI. Got and it. And if you can see the screen here, I can actually walk you through what that looks like. That this, this we'll screen just, is. Uh, yeah, we're gonna switch to. Hooray, AVD. <laughs> John's screen. 
Uh, Dawn, Dawn screen, screen, rather. John works with Swarm. There we go. Well, that's a little slow. Unfortunately, to actually dis um, demo this for you guys, we have to VNC into this device, so the screen lag here is a, a lot okay. longer than you'd actually see on a normal device. So the, the way we've, we've approached the... Let's, let's reconnect it. I'll just stop the VNC and reconnect. Yeah, sure. I'll just, I'll just walk it through. So uh, these two devices are both the Nexus line of products. So we have the Nexus 5, which is the phone, and the Nexus 7, which is the tablet. Both of them are running that Cali derivative in the CH root environment. And what we've done is we've taken 26 of some of our best or most used tools, and we've broken them down into four different categories. So we have network tools, we have wireless tools, attack tools, and Bluetooth tools. And what we've done is we've taken the, all these tools, we're generally using your engagements, but we've provided a CLI front end. So we've kind of appified them. So we've made them nice little icons, and it's as simple as clicking into the, the tool that you'd like to run, and it will drop you into a CLI menu where you just follow the on-screen instructions. So it'll always ask you if you want to log. So it's a simple, you know, your log management is incredibly simple. You just type in the number you want. It'll roll your MAC address of whatever interface you're using. So if you're using, I'm using a tool called AeroDump right now. So it'll automatically roll the MAC address of the TP-Link adapter that I have connected to this device. And now we can start seeing the actual, all the Wi-Fi enabled devices all around us. But what's very unique about the Android side of things is that we can actually stack all of our applications to do much more complex attacks. So if I wanted to start doing some real fun things, we could do tools like Evil AP. Evil AP is a tool for doing evil access points. So we've, made a really, we've taken this tool and we've <laughs> provided a really fun UI to it in the sense that it's very simple to set up a very, very malicious access point. And it's, it even well, yeah, because you're on the phone platform. You're just too, on. So you don't have a keyboard to. And what's mouse very, what to, makes yeah. the, these products very, very neat is that you don't need to be a 10-year veteran at penetration testing to use some of these incredibly complex tools. For, you know, deploying Evil AP for someone who doesn't have a background in penetration testing can be a very daunting task. Mm -hmm. And having all of these tools wrapped up in a nice UI and a nice package means you're not compiling those tools. You're not building those conf configuration files. You're just about the rapid assessment capability. So it's as simple as following on screen instructions. And if you can just read, then you can really use our entire mobile line of products to do a full penetration test. Mm -hmm. So it, it's as simple as following the on screen instructions, as I said. So what it's asking me to do here is choose my backhaul. So what I'm going to do here, just to walk you through, is fire a malicious access point, and I'll take a convict him to PC, and it'll oh, actually. I, I get to disable my wireless. No, 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 no. please join. It'll be <laughs> fun. But what's very <laughs> neat about on, this on, is that even if you don't join my network, I can actually force you <coughs> to join my network. Right, and that's right. through responding to all probes. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave the default public wireless on, which is just. So it's interesting. The karma attack it that is, we it's talked it's about years exactly. ago. Exactly. So yeah. it, it's still very prevalent today. So you can choose your channel. I'll leave it default, and this is where you can actually, you know, force probes to, uh, to respond to all probes, and it'll actually fire up evil AP instances based on every SSID name seen. Mm -hmm. So that way, based on proximity, your phone or your laptop or your whatever Wi-Fi enabled device will see their favorite network name pop up and they'll decide, I gotta join that. So that I fantastic. should join, join Pony Express Guest, right? Absolutely. Oh, sweet, all right, cool. So in the, in the <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would do that if I were you. So to, in the do interest I, of time do here. Do I look new here? <laughs> <laughs> don't answer that. <laughs> so we'll back around that process, and what you can do once you have your victim <coughs> PC who, or, or victim who connects to your access point, you can start doing real man-the-middle attacks. So you can roll tools like SSL strip for doing HTTPS man-the-middles. Mm. So, that way you can actually start grabbing passwords off the wire using tools like um, NetExploit, Set, you can you know, clone your intra pages, clone Google, do DNS poisoning. So there, there's, there's an incredibly versatile tool for doing all, form, or, you know, all manner of different penetration tests. So it, it's, a, it's an incredibly powerful thing just being able to click into these devices. Just to give you an idea of how easy it is to start doing a, a very quick engagement, I'll fire up a tool called Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is an automated attack tool for access points. So you follow your on-screen instructions. So it'll ask you what interface you want to use. The WLAN 1 is the TP-Link adapter that ships with all of our devices. So I'll just click 1, oh, drop in Oh, and that's connected to it now. Oh, so I we, see. we have a hub here running it's all of our, our adapters. Okay. Yeah, but for the uh, at-home viewers, it would look something like this, except maybe the TP-Link adapter. So in the area here. Oh, can, we, can we show that on camera? Maybe after we'll show that on camera when you're done with your demo. Uh-oh. Uh Did you just I'm spill your beer? I made an oops. Oh. Party oh. foul. The poor Awful. beer, not beer, Kevin. No. So you, you're trying to make me show things I got confused. It's okay. It didn't <laughs> spill on the... No, not the equipment. It's the, the, rug, the rug can take it. The equipment can't. Phrasing. My beautiful rug, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so the, this tool just allows you to select the access point you want to go after. I see we have an access point in the area that's running WEP. With this device, we'll most really? likely break it into it in about a minute. That, that's Ooh. actually the hair salon. Yeah, we that's, do that. that's awful. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a terrible, terrible ours. thing. We have their permission. It's fine. No, 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 no. I would never <laughs> do that. Go after the, uh, the Pony Express lab. I, we control that one. So we yeah, do control that one. So you just select the, uh, the, the access point you want to go after. So it's as simple as typing in the number. What's very neat about this tool is you actually can do WPS brute forcing. So even if you have a WPA2 encrypted network, we can actually brute force the WPS pin and gain a legitimate connection onto that network uh -huh. by capturing that, yeah, it takes that, about, that it pin. It takes about 10 hours. I, I it it does take a long process, time. But so you just brute force the... And with, uh, with something like Reaver? Yeah. It uses Reaver, yeah, yeah Reaver yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and yeah. Patty. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the WPS pin attack, and that's as simple as just clicking. And I'll actually start to listen for the WPA handshake. And you can see that I just had a client, I just de auth them, and then they force the reconnection. So now I can take this uh, capture, this hash, I can offload it to a more powerful machine to actually do a brute force attack. Oh, I see. Okay. So you, just, you grab yeah. the uh, yeah. handshake. I grab the handshake. Now yeah. you can do the, if you have a dictionary file on this device, you can start using Aircrack to actually go after and try and break that. But that's somewhat unrealistic on most engagements because of the time taken to actually try and crack that password. So it makes more sense to offload it. But let's say, you know, in the theory of our exercise here that I have already cracked that. So now I'm a legitimate client on this network. So I'm connected to our Pony Express lab here. This is the hash I just captured. So now I can actually jump on the wired side of things and start doing things like Nmap scans. So it's as simple as just clicking into the icon you want choosing the interface, and now it's the internal Wi-Fi card, as I'm using the internal Wi-Fi adapter of this device to legitimately connect to the network. And you'll just roll the tool. It'll automatically scan the, the local subnet here. And this takes about a minute to go. So once I find all my hosts, I can actually start going after them. But I can do that by using tools like Metasploit, or Set, or Desploit, or Ettercap. So, and that these are just the 26 tools that we've, you know, we've appified. We provided a nice icon form. We provided a nice CLI. But you still have the full Kali distro on the command line. So this mm -hmm. ships with another 100 tools that you can interface with. Or you can just app get install or aptitude, whatever tool that are in the repos. Gotcha. Nice. That's pretty cool. And you can put regular Android apps on that. And you can, too. yeah. This is, I mean, yeah. it's a fully functioning Android device. So what we've done is we've taken the Android kernel, we've recompiled it to allow us to do some pretty fun things. So this is running a custom Android kernel that allows us to do that CH root, CH root environment. I gotcha. So you wouldn't want to do a system update. You actually can't. So we've disabled okay, that so disable users that cannot brick their devices. Okay. So we will, we will uh, so systematically... Bad things might happen. Yeah, right. exactly. We'll systematically roll out a new update that will you know, bring you up to the latest edition of Android. I gotcha. Some of the other nice features of the, uh, whether it's the Pwn pad or the Pwn phone. Yeah, I was going to say, so that works the same way. The, everything Kevin yes. just described works on the Pwn. There are, there the, same there yeah. the, the real difference between the two devices just is size. just the form factor. Yeah. Uh, the hardware inside the Nexus 5 is a little bit speedier. This is running at a 2.2 gigahertz Snapdragon quad core, and this yep. is a 1.5. But they both have 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of OnDrive. And that is the Nexus 7 Gen 2. Gen, Gen 2. 2. Yeah. I have two Generation 1s. No fun. <laughs> so we, we actually released the 2014 edition software for the Gen 2 for the Gen 1, as confusing as that may sound. So you may f update your device to the current edition of the Palm Pad. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. We want to make sure everyone who buys our product gets to have all the cool right, stuff. Right, right, right. Well, and there's a community edition that you can put on your Nexus 7. Tablet. Yeah, you can actually flash this at home yourself if you own a Nexus 5 or a Nexus 7. That's correct, yep. Very cool. That's awesome. So one of the uh, nice features I was going to talk about that's new uh, to the latest version of the, uh, the operating system, the Punix operating system for the pad, as well as what's currently available on the phone, is the ability to factory reset the device. Mm. So there's been a few questions that have come up as of late with our, our customers where they've inquired about being able to re-image the device in hand without the requirement of, you know, plugging it into another system. So mm. now on board, uh, there's a factory reset option. So if you want to wipe the device securely, of, uh, of any information that's been acquired, or you simply just want to re-image it, maybe the result of you having borked the device as a result of maybe installing something third party, you can easily factory reset the device uh, in hand, and that will revert it right back to a, a factory released image. And, um, and by factory released, you mean Pony Express factory? Pony Express Correct. factory okay. release. As if, so it was just as if you've just received it and opened it up out of the box. Got it, okay. Yeah. No. As, as opposed to Google factory reset. That's correct. Exactly, yeah. Yep. yeah. So it's a completely seamless. It's you just click the app icon, it'll 
wipe the entire thing and reinstall the image over it again. Excellent. And if you want to do something a little bit you know, less uh, drastic and you just simply want to purge all the log files from the device as a result of completing an engagement, you know, there's a, a secure log wiper fun functionality that uh, will, will go through and purge all the log files relevant to all the applications on the device uh, from anything that's been captured as how it's been used. So. Speaking of logs, this actually makes it incredibly easy to gather all of your logs for all the tools. So everything logs to a central directory structure, it's just slash logging. And we have uh, an icon on here that allows you to actually dump that entire directory to a USB stick. So you can just <coughs> plug in, click the icon, and go. Yeah, just plug awesome. a USB stick into the bottom, run that little applet, uh, captures the USB, and it dumps all the capture files off to that USB. And then you can take that and reflash or reimage the device and you know, move on. We're forgetting one of the coolest things about this device. What's that? The reverse shells. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. So yeah, all yeah. the reverse shell capability that Don showed before, we built into our mobile line. Yeah, I don't know if Wait, I really so want to leave this behind on a desk. No, but, but, but what you, you can, can do oh. is ha if you have a two-man operation, you're doing a physical penetration test, and you don't want to be walking around with a phone in your hand or a tablet in your hand. You just put it in your bag. Yeah. You use the internal 4G connection to actually reverse shell home, and your second guy can log in remotely using that. Oh, okay. so this can act as the as the pivot phone, point, the phone yeah. device. Not exactly. The can act as a receiver or no? So no, no. This would actually call out to a receiver, to a receiver. So and then you log in remotely. Think about the scenario where you go into a secure facility and you're asked to leave your phone behind in a bin at the reception desk. Yep. You know what I mean? And then as you go into the into the environment, you know that phone is still fully accessible, accessible and controlled by someone external to the facility. You know so. Uh, John and Joff, do you guys have questions? No, I just it, it, as Paul mentioned, this is a these are kind of a set of tools that we've been using. I was just playing around with mine. Phrasing um, here <laughs> while we're talking about it. I, I, I got a, I got a question. Do you find and I think someone kind of asked this question, but I want to rephrase it. Do you find most of your customers are penetration testers that do pen testing as part of their job? Or do you find it actually people are testing their own corporations and they're setting the stuff up for their own kind of edification? It's a great question. Um, it, it's, it's basically, it's, it's anyone and everyone. Uh, I can't say that there's any one specific customer. I mean, we have a across the board mix of, of, of consultants, individuals, um, corporations, uh, that are using that are using a, a combination of different solutions. We have some organizations that are purely just using the appliances as a means of, of gaining remote visibility. We have consultants who are using uh, the R2s and the appliances for permanent fixed deployments. The the mobile line, the, the Pwn pads and the Pwn phones now, they're very popular with uh, individuals. Obviously, as a result of its you know the sexiness, and then they, and also consultants as well. Um, with regards to functionality. Um, the reality is that not a lot of people are doing pen testing in large-scale deployments. They're really looking at seeing all the things. They're looking at understanding what's visible in their remote environment because that's obviously where a lot of weakness could occur, at least as a beginning point, as a beginning stage in an APT. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it, it certainly comes down to the individual and, and the scope of the engagement. And if it does involve pen testing, well, then any one of these different form factors could, could fulfill that, uh, that step. Yeah, because I, I hate for people to say, ah, there's no way I could get this authorized at my company because I'm not doing pen testing because the usage for these is, is massive because especially in large companies, you have a security company that say is in Memphis and then you have offices all over the world. This really gives you a full attack platform at those rem remote locations so you don't have to do testing over a VPN because let's be honest, that just <laughs> kind of sucks. Yeah, I've been there. I know what you're talking about. VPN is not for pen testing. Uh, this is the perfect <coughs> solution to, uh, to, to deal with that, uh, that cumbersome approach. So I have two questions. You mentioned on the, the mobile device the ability to sort of factory reset, Pony Express factory reset yeah, yeah. in hand. Does that functionality exist on some of the, the fixed platforms? Not at present, at least not as easily. Okay. You know, okay. I mean, for the appliance, there is a, uh, a USB stick that ships that allows you to reset the appliance okay. back. And uh, the, the Elite, um, I don't believe so. Kevin, you know more the, about the Elite than and I. the R2 are both devices that you can reflash at home. It's a little more of a cumbersome sure. process is that you just need to wipe the, the device and reinstall. It's yep. not as simple as clicking an icon right. or with the, the, the or Enterprise. Or something in the grid. web interface and go. Yeah. Exactly, reset the factory yeah. defaults. Okay. Yeah. Um, and same thing for the logging. Uh, with the, the mobile products, USB can transfer all the logs. Does that sort of same functionality exist for the fixed platform as well? For all, that's across the board. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, logging the ability to uh, the ability to, um, to to wipe the logs. No, no, logs? well, to to copy all the logs off. 
It, it, it does for the mobiles. Uh, for the fixed, I think it does. It's the a fixed line is, is tool dependent. Yeah. So okay. most, uh, most of the tools, because we're based on Kali, will log to that central var log. So okay. it, it's, it's, if you're familiar with Kali, then you're familiar with the okay. logging capabilities of the, of the static yep. side. Yep. Okay. Can we talk about the dongles? <laughs> hey, yeah, well, wait a minute. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? I have a, I have a question about some, some of that dongle, so I think it's a probably good, good segue. So All right. this is a TP link. Uh, <coughs> sorry, high gain. It's a high gain, 150, uh, 150 uh, high gain uh, wireless adapter. That's correct. Yep. And uh, well, that's what makes this particular chipset so special? Obviously, it has to support injection and things like that, it right? It does. Both receive and uh, transmit injection, yep. Um, that's awesome. The power, the high gain, the uh, omnidirectional antenna. Uh, you can't use the onboard. Uh, right. The onboard always is going to support receive only. So we needed to have something that would be, that would fit the device. You know, look good, support the ability of folding down the antenna, keeping a little bit hidden, um, and that was the perfect solution that we looked at. Mm -hmm. You know, for that, that's what we settled on. And 2.4 gigahertz or 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. 2.4. Yeah, okay. 2.4. Yeah. And this is obviously a special little USB cable. It's called on the, the, on the go cable. Yep. Yeah, it's a standard cable. Android cable. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, so, so Android does support that. Because remember when before there was Pony Express, there were those Nokia devices. Remember yep. the N770. Mm, and yeah. You used to have to hack the drivers to get it to support uh, other USB so devices. So when we initially launched the Pome Pad back in 2013, uh, one of the the very special things that made the the product so capable is that we did through the kernel modifications we, we were able to do USB host mode, and that's how yes. we were actually able to use the external adapters. And there's yep. there no other Android <laughs> device could actually do that at that point. Android has since rolled that into their kernel, so it's made it a lot easier. Yep. But yeah, the, the dongles themselves, each one of our devices ship with three different adapters. There's the TP-Link Wi-Fi adapter. There's the Senna UD100 Bluetooth adapter, mm -hmm. which also supports monitor mode and packet injection. Thousand and foot these, range. Uh, thousand foot range, at least manufacturer rating. Yep, but so very cla class one. Yeah. Exactly. Class one device. Right in, yep. So what's very neat is that you're all standard SMA. So if you want to ramp up these antennas, it's just as simple as just screwing them on and going. And we also ship with a USB to Ethernet adapter for the wired side. Excellent, excellent. Um, one of the other questions sort of related to dongle would be sort of 3G, 4G, and, and probably more, more uh, appropriate for the fixed platform. Um, any particular recommendations for a USB to 3G, 4G specific providers? Any specific luck around some of those? The, the Elite mm -hmm. ships with one, right? The Elite, and, uh, actually, all of our mobile, or excuse me, fixed line ship with a uh, GSM tri band adapter. So you can actually take that adapter anywhere in the world and use it. As for actual providers, we found that AT&T is That's one, one of the best. The best. Um, one to work with. They're there. We we're finding more and more carriers are, are less apt to just sell you a data only plan. They want to throw on the nine mm -hmm. other extras that you have sure. to have. But AT&T, as long as you just go and say, I want data only and I just want a single SIM card, they'll just happily give it to you. They have a special. So you can just go buy a data plan with a SIM card. Yep. card. Yeah. yeah. And then you That's just awesome. slap it in there and that device will call home. That's great. I uh, know, but you have to sign up for some kind of plan, right? You'd have, yeah. You, you unfortunately have to pay them money. Right. Yeah, and, and you <laughs> well, no, but you can't just buy, like, you can buy a burner phone, right? That, But you can't just buy you a data card. you got to sign up for a year. You can take the SIM card out of your phone already yeah, if you want. You pop that in. As I remember, because I, I did exactly that um, well, at you the were time. on the run from the law? Yeah. yeah. Phones? <laughs> Drop yeah. phones, something no, like that. At the time, you could go into, at the time, and this was a couple years ago, you could go into AT&T and say, I want a month-to-month SIM Data plan. Yeah, I and they would, just a lot of that. They're, yeah, they they're hard that. to find. I found that Virgin Mobile that's it, yeah. still does that. Yep. Um, but those carriers that do month to month plans are, are few those and far between these days. And, and you pay for it. Yeah, oh, you pay yeah. For it, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Any other questions uh, from the Security Weekly crew for the Pony Express folks? John, Joff? I, I had one esoteric question, and that was why not tunnel DNS through the native? DNS server on the network because if you send a packet with a spoofed source IP address, the DNS identifier will be preserved. You could tunnel traffic through the ID. Yeah, it's a great question. I don't know why um, I don't know why that implementation never came around. Um, it's a great question. I'll have to forward on to developers uh, as to why they never thought about that implementation. I think that would be a great feature to add and increase the stealth value. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll pass it on. Thanks. Paul, did you want to come back on if you make this microphone live? Nick, thank you. Uh, I wanted to uh, to ask about the uh, the roadmap going forward. I don't know how much you want to disclose about what you guys are working on. 
You have to hold that a little closer to your mouth. Oh, it's not working. Oh, it's not working. Kevin dropped a beer on it. Kevin dropped a beer on it. Not Kevin dropped a beer. It's still muted. Yeah, just push that little white button on channel one. Yeah. That might help. All right, try it now, Paul. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, I think John asked the question, Paul, about uh, enterprise or corporate use versus uh, individuals. Um, And one of the things that we're working on, I, I think I referred to this before, is a SaaS offering that would allow us allow an organization to basically deploy many of these, um, whether they be fixed or mobile. Mm-hmm. So if you think of it, if you're a consulting organization, we've talked a lot about consultants, and a lot of your a lot of your audience are consultants and practitioners, uh, but the, half of them probably are within large companies, and we find that it's pretty much a 50-50 split between those who are practitioners working full time in a company to those that are uh, either working on their own or part of a consulting organization. Um, in both cases, we're finding that uh, they want to deploy more, but they want some way to manage this centrally. And so we have been working on a project uh, with the customers that have that interest in a, in a you know, SaaS central offering. So you can actually, the fixed devices, you can leave them in place um, and manage them on a continuous basis. So. So some of the things that uh, we talked a lot about visibility tonight, and one of the things people want to do is have a continuous flow of what's coming in and out of the environments that they're responsible for, whether it's a branch bank or it's a warehouse facility. Uh, We find that uh, the the use cases are as simple as figuring out if somebody plugged in a rogue access point. Could be a wireless access point. New wireless networks. New exactly. Bluetooth devices right. could be a, an issue that you normally wouldn't see anywhere else. Bluetooth or, uh, you know, people plugging into the wired network. A lot, of, yeah. a lot of the firewalls and a lot of the systems are so locked down that you can't see from headquarters uh, whether the devices that are on your network yeah. are yours or somebody else's. Uh, typical uh, case we hear all the time is contractors come in to an organization. They need access. They just plug in and start using what's there. If they, don't, if they want Wi-Fi, they <coughs> plug in their wireless access point. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of organizations uh, end up with problems because of that. So, so there's, when you look at this from, a, from an organizational perspective, drilling down or do a pen test is, is sort of uh, the ultimate of what you might want to do. But th- at the beginning of that, you just want to know what's there. Yeah. Um, if you don't know what's there, you can't perform an assessment. I- exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. There's, there's sort of, uh, you know, the military uh, would look at it and say, you know, every, every movie you watch where... The enemy's over the hill, and you go over the hill, and you think there's, there'll be a hundred of them. And, and every movie, they, you climb the hill, and you look over there into the valley, and there's a thousand, right? So it's a great scene in The Walking Dead where they, you know, the car goes <laughs> over the cliff, and yeah. they see like thousands of zombies. Right. It's the same. Yeah. It's yeah. Same. So it's the same, same idea. And, and with the proliferation of uh, Wi-Fi devices, it's becoming a bigger problem. So that's that's a project we're working on, and we hope to uh, next quarter have something to say about that. But that's that's the direction we're going in, uh, is figuring out how to take something that's really cool and tie, it, and, and tie it back to a central system. On the mobile side, for the consulting organizations, they want some ability to capture logs on, a, on, say, a massive test that they're doing for a large organization. So they may have consultants deployed around the world, and they want some way to monitor what's, uh, what's being done and, can, and have some degree of control, mm-hmm. right? So, um, so you want to be able to roll up that information and use it on a centralized basis. So when you, when you look at it from that perspective, uh, the, the applications are more visibility and scanning. When you look at it from a pen test perspective, uh, if you see something you don't like or you want to explore further, you can then go right back into what these guys were talking about mm-hmm. and zoom in on a particular asset. Right. So, so that's a little bit about what we're, what we're doing. And it's one thing to say, hey, I found something new on the network. It's another thing to say, hey, I got shell on that new thing on the network and I mined all its data from it and I decrypted all the passwords and this is really bad. We should probably fix this soon. Well, and, and you know, there's lots of stuff that's out there that's fine. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things we're finding is that they, they just want to look at the trend data. You know, mm-hmm. if, if devices come in every day, think of it as almost like a, a baseline whitelist. You know, if they're there every day and nothing bad has happened, Maybe they're good. Maybe they're your employees. Maybe they're your your uh, your contractors, your customers. Uh, it's when things pop up that are anomalies that wait a minute. This this doesn't show up every day. What is this thing? Right. right. So it it's uh, the applications we're finding by deploying this kind of capability 
and trying to automate it and then trying to look at it from a corporate perspective. It sort of changes how you look at it a little bit. Um, it's not the pen tester that's looking at it that way. It's, it's sort of maybe the pen tester's boss. It right. might be the vulnerability manager. It might be the uh, incident response team. Uh, you know, an incident happens, uh, they, they, get, they catch it in the log, but they'd like to know who or what was in the area when that, when that occurred. Mm -hmm. So we're finding that there's, by pushing the envelope with this capability, uh, there's a whole new class of capabilities, security capabilities that go beyond mm -hmm. the traditional what's on the network, what can I sense, what can I detect, to what's around the network, um, what's in the vicinity of the network, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, cool. yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I, so I had a conversation with a gentleman from an unnamed three letter agency that described his situation very similar to that. And went, oh, I get it. Yeah. They yeah. can't, I can tell you this that whether it's a retailer, a bank, uh, uh, a, a you know, well developed uh, intelligence organization, they cannot see what's running in their remote locations. Uh, embassies, right? Those kinds of places. Mm -hmm. Lots of those uh, distributed organizations, they've got their act together, they're buttoned up at headquarters. You go into headquarters and you know, they, they check your security before you come in the door. You go in a remote location, the door is open. All bets are off. Yeah. Right, yeah. So the rules are different. Hmm. And, uh, it, and you know, the people on the other side of what we're trying to do have figured out that, that exact thing. So that's the right. low hanging fruit. Uh, and it's a soft <coughs> spot, it's a blind spot for a lot of organizations today. No, I agree. I talked to a lot of people that, you know, customers in the past that are like, yeah, we don't have in the budget to pen test all those remote locations, yep. you know. We may try just scanning them over the network, but <sighs> that can be, that. That can <sighs> be <sighs> dicey, <sighs> right? Because those remote locations typically have lower Full bandwidth. bandwidth yep. And what bandwidth they do have, <coughs> business operations has to go mm -hmm. through there, and that's not just during the day, that's at night. So yeah. uh, having a device out there is definitely right. useful. And external scans are not enough. No, know? absolutely so, not. Um, and you're right, you're right. Bandwidth isn't there. Um, and the firewalls won't allow the tools to get through anyhow. So yeah, yeah. you have two, two limitations. You know? mm -hmm. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks. We're going to take a short break. Well, before um, you do this. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, do you have a prize giveaway? Or? I do have a okay. couple of things I'd like to tell you okay. about. So first this, of all. This is mine to keep, Paul. You shouldn't have. That one's not yours to keep, <laughs> but, th but this one is. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, man. You better have one for me. Now, <laughs> I, I feel badly because I've known Larry for longer than I've known you. But... I um, might, you're I gonna might fight over it internally. For I, no, that, that, that's okay. I'll give you my shipping address. That's cool. I might, I might <laughs> in order to receive it, he has to buy a motorcycle. He's got to get. I might let him oh. look at it. Property of Security <laughs> Weekly. How's that? Yeah, that means it's Paul's. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, never to see the light of day again. I'll, I'll give you the number, and you can call me. <laughs> call me. <laughs> but, but we don't. Do, we don't. Do, do you know what? I get the digits. <laughs> yeah. Still got it. Still but, got it after all these years. But with all due respect, <laughs> the people that matter, the people that are listening to this, and. Um, and we'd yeah, like we to make them an them? offer as well. Yeah, we can't give them uh, each a phone, but we'd uh, like what to What phone? Offer. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we kind of brainstormed an idea, and we said, okay, now through Friday the 13th, June, Friday the 13th, June which 13th, is coming okay. up. Now right? through June 13th. Right? If you use, we'll have to figure out how to do this with you, but a, sec a code for your, your website. We want, why don't we do Security Weekly 10? Okay, yeah. Security Weekly 100, because we'll give you $100 Oh, off okay. on any of these devices nice. that are ordered through Friday the 13th. Security Weekly 100. You got it. On your website, $100 That's right. off. First 20. First 20 you before can't go out of business. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> no, it's very important. I encourage and all my make sponsors. It, make, it, make, it, make a suggestion. Instead of Security Weekly 100, make it easier to type in in case Security Weekly is going to be too long for said field. How about, ah, S S how about SW100? SW100. SW100. Thanks, SW100. First 20, any of the devices. It doesn't matter whether it's the pad, the phone, the appliance, uh, the R2. First 20 before June 13th, you got it. SW100, right. Pony Express. Now it's not up right now, but it'll be up by tomorrow, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be up soon. There's people. Right. Give me a couple hours. There's people right. writing code right now to make that happen. You got it. All right. Awesome. Excellent. Thank Thanks you. so much, Thanks. Paul. Great to be here. Thanks, Kevin. We are not Kevin, hey, sorry. Hey, not yeah. Kevin. Not. I'm jealous. We're That's gonna it. take a a short break. <laughs> you short, uh, yeah. yeah. You look in your lap. That's cool. And. Uh, <laughs> We're going to get resituated re here. We're going to come back and talk about the stories for this week. It's been a very exciting news week. Oh my Josh gosh. has been uh, a little quiet over there so far, but He's I can sleeping. tell you what? he He's is sleeping. he is 
building up all of his pent up rage I, and is going to uh, unleash it on I, his next I, segment. I, can, can you, you know get, what I did just to make sure we have enough rage? Did I you just added a heart, <laughs> I just added a heart bleed story. Oh, oh God, <laughs> Jack. Oh, if, if Jack is going to build up and release, can you guys get a box of tissues over yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> all righty, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. 